With each passing day, we inflict more damage to our planet. A violent year of climate change range is already unprecedented. Experts say that we have until the planet. It is beyond any doubt that human activity is to blame. Climate change is getting worse. More and more species are becoming extinct. Entire forests are being cut down. Our waterways are increasingly polluted. Coral reefs continue to die. And natural disasters are far more common and stronger. To make things worse, we're at or near the point of no return, and lawmakers and legislators still don't seem to want to listen. Normal, everyday people continue to litter and support environmentally irresponsible companies, and with each day that passes, we have one day less to act. Things are scary, but though it seems dire, we need to resist the temptation to act out of fear. I get it, it seems fear and worry are the only natural responses to the situation we're in. I'm not telling you to not let yourself feel the way you feel, because I feel the same. But that doesn't mean that we need to go out into the world and spread that fear, even though it might seem like that's the only way to get people to finally perk up and listen. Trust me, it's not. And that's me speaking from personal experience. Around this time last year, I felt really fearful for the planet. I feel like this about once a year, so this time I wanted to try to do something about it which eventually drove me to start going outside regularly to pick up trash. You might be thinking, that's great, your fear got you to act, but unfortunately this isn't the whole story. The truth is that because of my fear, it was very hard for me not to judge the people who littered in the first place or those who saw me picking up trash and continued on with their day without even batting an eye. This sort of thinking continued to spiral and soon my judgments extended to almost everyone. I judged my family for how much plastic they still used, I judged people with takeout, I judged people who used their car to get to a nearby store. There was pretty much no one I didn't judge and criticize. In my mind, if you weren't actively trying to reverse climate change, you were part of a problem. Eventually, this sort of thinking even started affecting how I saw my own actions, and within about a month, I started doubting whether what I was doing was really making a difference or not. Instead, I started focusing on everything I did and didn't do to move the needle ever closer to the point of no return. And this made me fall into despair and overwhelm, to the point that I stopped picking up trash altogether, just a few weeks after starting. What I learned from this experience is that fear is a double-edged sword that will cut you regardless of the side you're on. At its best, it can push you to act, but your actions will be frenetic and callous. At its worst, it will overwhelm you and tear you down, bit by bit, until you can no longer withstand it. It will fill you with doubt and hate and negativity and push you down into the depths of desperation and paralysis, and you won't be able to do anything about it. Luckily, around that time, I came across an Instagram account called Live to Learn, Learn to Live and I saw that there was a better way. This account is run by Joshua Siedi, and his mission is to get back to the basics, to learn how to reconnect with nature and live in sync with her, rather than seeing her only as something to domineer and exploit. As he does this, he shares his journey as it unfolds, highlighting all his highs and lows. But what's so special about his account is that it focuses on what he has, what goes right, his appreciation of nature, and his love of life. And his positivity is infectious. After watching just a few of his reels, I was able to climb out of the hole that I had dug myself into with fear. And almost effortlessly, I was able to change my perspective and approach to environmental awareness. Because of him, I saw that you can encourage people to change through positivity and that this is actually much more powerful than doing it through negativity can ever be. Because it makes you want to change, do better, and do differently by appealing to the part in all of us that genuinely wants to see a change in the world for the better. The part that is loving and caring and compassionate instead of guilting, shaming, coercing, or provoking us into it. Because of him, I was able to understand that love amplifies love, and because of my personal experiences, I understood that fear amplifies fear. Yes, people can and do change out of fear, but there's a lot of collateral damage because of it. A lot of hurt feelings, drained energy, miscommunication, and negative consequences along the way. The path of love and compassion is a much better strategy. 
It leads to people feeling seen and understood and wanting to change because their humanity has been acknowledged. If you don't believe me, then just ask yourself, when was the last time you genuinely changed after someone shouted at you, judged you, criticized you, or otherwise negatively related to you? Yes, you might have changed, but only for fear of the consequences. And I'm not the only one who argues this either. Just listen to what Naval has to say on the matter. Everyone's on social media shouting about environmentalism and conserve and sustain. And I go to this guy's house and he was doing a, a very quietly, very gently, he was doing a two week long uh, zero waste experiment. And it was really inspirational. Meeting people like him made me far more environmentally conscious than you know any amount of people yelling at me on social media ever will. The thing is, fear is never an effective strategy for anything. Sure, it can get stuff done, but there are always better options available. So my goal with this video isn't to convince you to stop being a voice for the environment. It's just to encourage you to reconsider the use of fear as your main motivator. Because as I've already talked about, doing so means you run the risk of falling prey to apathy or getting to a point where you can no longer enjoy the present because you fear what may or may not happen in the future. Which is not only ironic, but also counterproductive and possibly detrimental to the environmental movement because you'll get to a point where you can no longer advocate for it. Of course, I have no way of knowing what will or will not happen. No one does. But I can almost certainly say that the best chance we have of making a difference and reversing the tide is to work together and leave fear behind. If you like this video, then you might also like the video that I'll link in the end card. It speaks on why I think that wanting to change the whole world is a misguided desire. Before you leave though, leave a comment down below letting me know what you do to keep environmental doom and anxiety at bay. I would love for this to be a space where we could all share with each other, so I really look forward to reading what you guys have to say. As for right now though, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.